Who had Frank Pantangeli killed? The Rosado brothers. I know. But who gave the go-ahead? I know I didn't. Wow, such a great scene, right? That's Hyman Roth. Remember when Hyman, remember that in The Godfather, Hyman Roth? They said when, when, when Michael asked him, who, who, who ordered the hit? Right? Who ordered that hit? And Hyman Roth said, this is the business we chose. Ah, fucking wisdom. Such wisdom in movies. Such wisdom in movies. My name is Marcus Conti, reporting from my mother's basement in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, today, I want to I want to talk about a couple of things uh, other than Donald Trump's shape of Donald Trump's penis, like CNN would like to talk about. I want to talk about a couple of things. One is, uh, first of all, uh, we're going to talk about the body bag of comparing Hillary Clinton's body bag to John Gotti, the, the notorious gangster from the '80s, and we'll talk about the uh, the amount of killing these two individuals have done and how they do it. Right, so. There's a couple of points I want to make first. Is uh, just just a little side note in terms of um, in terms of censorship, right? I don't censor these these threads, and I w I wish that other commentators that do this kind of work didn't as well. But I have noticed that most of the commentators out there tend to tend to uh, censor their own threads, and then and then. They come out of the other side of their mouth and say, censorship is bad. See, Alex Jones, the fucking big oligarchies are censoring us. But then they do it themselves. They censor out their own people. And they censor out any conflicting, any clash of ideas that may clash with their ideas. And they silence those people using, you know, thug moderators and in the super chat. They got the guy with the, the blue guy with the, with the fucking wrench, you know, the, the hatchet man, right? And, um... So I just want to put out there that anybody who who uh, who speaks here, you have your First Amendment is protected. I will protect your First Amendment, okay? And uh, I believe in that. I believe in a clash of ideas. It doesn't matter what you say. It, it, <clears throat> calling me, if you want to come on here and, and exhaust yourself and and call me a jack off and a and a and hippie and a and you know fucking horse teeth, whatever you say, I don't care. And if you want to come and 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 fan you know fan my ego, that's fine too. Because to me, it's all the same. <clears throat> What's most important is that you voice your opinion in an open forum. I think that it's time that we all go back to a, 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 a an open forum of, of a, an exchange of ideas sometimes hostile sometimes sometimes you know not hostile sometimes sometimes ah, fucking swords come out right that's just the nature of the American dialogue so so you're welcome to say you'll never be censored here unless you put up some stupid spam so the other thing is health everybody asks me Conti how are you so beautiful at 54 years old are you lying where's your birth certificate are you actually 50 are you in your 50s how can you be 50s you look like a young man and I want to tell you that that uh, a big part of uh, of this work for me is fueled by my fuel which is a vegan diet of diet of of, of diet and exercise a regimen a healthy regimen of exercising at least three times a week where, where I run as, ma as many as five miles and and also uh, a diet of, uh, of uh, you know very little junk food and and, and a high um, high nutrient con content foods lots of fruits and vegetables if it grows out of the ground I'll eat it I don't eat any meat products or animal products because for twofold one is that it's they're, they're all pumped up with steroids and they're very you know I, I believe also that the violence that animals go through prior to people eating them is also contained in the meat um, I think it's transferable and the last one I'll talk about is meditation that, that there's this voice in our head right that we're walking down the street and it's the voice that says you're walking down everything's fine all of a sudden this voice pops up and says Oh, you suck. You know, you, what, 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 why even try? Why even try? Just go fucking much. Just go up on the bridge. Jump off the bridge. No one gives a shit about your opinion. Nobody cares about anything that you're going to say. You're ugly. You're stupid. You're fat. Your clothes are ugly. You're old. Right? That's the voice of the inner critic. And that is the human condition, unfortunately, at this time in history. Right? And it's getting more severe. And the, the anecdote, the modern day anecdote for that is to overwork ourselves or to throw drugs at it. Medication, 
smoke it up, right? Smoke away your, your, your problems or, or, or take some, some, some narcotics, you know, nice pharmaceuticals, of course, you know, legal, it's all legal. Or, uh, or the drink, right? To, to quiet those voices in our head. And the other side of it is to fly into it and observe it. And that's my secret is that I observe the noise in my head. And I've learned to make friends with it and play patty cake with it. And and if you think your voice is loud, <laughs> you should try fucking five minutes being inside Conti's head. Man. Shit, it's crazy. So, who has killed more people? Let's talk about the subject. Who has killed more people? The assassination of Paul Castellano has local and federal officials looking for the men who did it and for a motive. Finding either or both extremely difficult given the secrecy of organized crime. We may never know why Castellano was killed. So down below, let's start with Hillary Clinton. So is this a myth? Is there really is there really a Hillary Clinton body bag? Is this something that we would is this a conspiratorial theory that Hillary Clinton, a very powerful person who ran for president, secretary of state, was the first lady under Bill Clinton? who was a, a senator in New York, that anybody, not anybody, but plenty of people who have gotten close to Hillary and Bill Clinton die mysteriously, right? Now, as Hyman Roth said, who gave the order, right? As Michael said, who gave, said, said to Hyman Roth, who gave the order, right? Now, does anybody really think that we think Hillary Clinton was, you know, took the gun and shot you know, Vince Foster in the back of the head twice or was at the hospital pulling the plug on Seth Rich or was slapping the toxic patch on the back of Jenny Moore in, in, in a hotel in D.C. or the other 55 mysterious murders that Hillary Clinton somehow ha has been, you know, part of, bizarre suicides, beaten to death murders, hail of bullets, right? Do we really believe that Hillary Clinton did it themselves? Did it herself, or was it was it was it? Did she assign it, or the, is she so far removed that she has a you know a group of people that do that sort of thing to make her problems go away? I think it's the latter. I think it's a it's a nod and a wink that then transfers into a hit. Right? Now. So I, I've listed down below 57. I put Jen Moore in there. It was a list of 56, and I stuck Jen, Jenny's name on the end of it. And, you know, there's some notables. There's Vince Foster. There's Ron Brown. You can read all about these people. Ed Wiley, Jerry Parks, James Wilson. There's so many. There's, there's all the, the, uh, the, the bodyguards when she was in the White House. They're all dead. Barbara Weiss. Dr. Stanley Hard, nay, on and on and on and on, names of people that were 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 in were within earshot of Hillary Clinton that somehow died. Remember recently, John Ash, the former president, uh, NYU counsel, was awaiting trial on bribery charges when he turned up dead in June. That's when the the barbell fell and crushed his crushed his neck while he was on his way to court. Seth Rich still, you know, still do almost direct evidence that puts the killing in the hands of the DNC. Now, Hillary Clinton was in charge of the DNC. Indirect, you know, that's that's an indirect connection between Hillary Clinton and the death of Seth Rich. That is still unsolved. There's also uh, Sean Lucas, the death of the DNC, um, you know, lawsuit uh, processor. Right. He process he he's the one who served the DNC on behalf of the attorneys uh, in the DNC for a lawsuit. All dead. All dead. Jenny Moore now is, is the newest one. We haven't we're getting close to solving that one. So we're going to get more information as the autopsy comes out. But um, uh oh, cat's not happy. So are these all are, are they just coincidences? Do people just suddenly suddenly die? See, here's the difference. Like Hillary Clinton. It's all shh, don't say anything, right? It's it's done in a way where it's been normalized through through the agencies. Uh oh, I got a visitor. See the tail? Uh oh. That means this is the truth cat. Can say hello. Say hello. Say hello. So 
The na- her name is Kat, by the way, K A T. So, um, with with Hillary Clinton, it's all been so normalized, right? It's very, it's 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 FBI, it's CIA. We saw the how the hits transpire through uh, through the FBI with Comey, McCabe, and and uh, and these strokes of Page and all these names, Rosenstein, Rosenstein. I had all these guys, right? All these all these uh, uh, ancillary, I think that's the word, you know. Uh, side they're they're side they're they're side men that do the the dirty work and what better way to do a hit than have the fbi the the people that that uh you know that that understand that thing inside and out so they're off 50 now the the other there's the 50 read read the names and 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 you make you make the decision right now the other thing is is there a comparison am i am i making a wild a wild accusation a wild uh comparison of two things that have nothing in common when I say Hillary Clinton is 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 very very much like John Gotti how say you with respect to defendant John Gotti guilty or not guilty you find him not guilty So let's talk about John Gotti. Here's my experience. I'm in Brooklyn, New York, right? And so the story of John Gotti, we all know the story of Clinton, but let's, let me talk, if you're not sure who John Gotti is, I'll tell you who he is. So John Gotti is a, was a gangster in, in uh, Queens, New York, right? And the way the family, he was part of the Gambino crime family. He was an underboss. And that basically means that there's a lot of underbosses beneath the Godfather, who at the time was Paul Castellano. And there's also one below the Godfather, which is the Consigliare, which is which at the time was Anilio Del Croce. Now, again, I know the story very well because I lived very close to a, a few of these people, and so as a kid, I re- I had I, it was it was very close to home when Castellano, Paul Castellano, the Godfather, was got whacked by Gotti. But let me just give you a little background. I'll tell you how how these guys operate and and how it pertains to the hits so Gotti has was was ultimately convicted on five murders right right because there was there was political will to have it done right how many bodies has he actually killed probably three or four times that so his number is probably around 20 and Hillary Clinton if there's 56 that we know of it's probably three or four times that probably about 150 hits Right, that we don't even know about, and that's not including, you know, the the political hits abroad that she did as Secretary of State. Those are also murders, but we're just talking about the the whistleblower type murders, right? So, so, so here's John Gotti, right? John Gotti is an up and coming boss in the New York City crime family, the Gambinos, and Paul Castellano is the Godfather. And the the one below them is Anilio Del Croce. He's a, he's the consigliare of the crime family, right? He's the counselor, and Anilio Del Croce believed he was he was like the 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 uh, buffer between the Staten Island Brooklyn crew and the uh, Queens crew, which uh, Gotti was a, a leader of. And there was this friction over who could sell, who was going to sell drugs. Would they sell drugs? Would they traffic in drugs? Castellano at the time, along with the with that crowd, was was against it because they had other interests. They had all kinds of legitimate, <laughs> you know, racketeering. They had all kinds of uh, other uh, businesses that were generating millions of dollars, and they thought that the drug thing. They frowned on the drug thing, whereas Gotti's team thought thought of it as leaving money on the table. So, the peacemaker between these two groups was Emilio Del Croce. He was the counselor, and. Neilio Del Croce, he died of natural causes in his backyard in, you know, in fucking Staten Island at a barbecue, right? He took a heart attack and he died. And two weeks later, see, that was the, so Gotti would go to Del Croce and, and then the talk would happen between Castellano. And, and the, the, Brook, the Staten Island crowd under Thomas Bellotti would go to, uh, you know, Del Croce and, and he was the buffer. So when this guy died, when the council died, it left it left a power vacuum, and that's when Gotti. Uh, they they called Castellano to a meeting, uh, right in front of in, in Manhattan, 
back in 1985 in front of Sparks Steakhouse, and that's where Castellano got shot. So Gotti was there. That's confirmed. He was in a car by, on, on the side of the, you know, close by. And his henchman got out, and when Castellano and his driver, Thomas Bellotti, the other part of Thomas Bellotti, he wasn't just a driver. He was, Gotti, uh, Paul Castellano wanted to make Thomas Bellotti the next godfather. And the guys in Queens saw that as a way of, um, as, a, as a betrayal, right? It was a betrayal. So they wanted to, they wanted to, they wanted somebody in Queens to run the show so that their voices would be heard. Right? So when, so Bellotti was actually part of the hit. Right? So when Castellano and, and, and Thomas Bellotti got out of their car to, to, to meet Gotti and his team at Spark Steakhouse to have a couple of steaks and a couple of, you know, a couple of drinks, instead of that, they got shot dead in the street and you saw everybody saw the pictures everybody saw the the photographs and then Gotti's car as as legend has it Gotti pulls up to to view the bodies to see if they're dead right so how many how many so so here's the difference right with with the with the mob right the whole thing is driven by putting fear into your enemy right that's why they do it that's what a hit is all about right for Gotti if you if you whack the, the Godfather or you whack someone below the Godfather, someone that's in your way, then that that fear turns people people fear you. And they're not gonna betray you and they and they you, you, you gain power in that fashion. And the Clintons Hillary Clinton certainly there's so much evidence to suggest that that happened. And the most recent one is Seth Rich, right? Where you had a young man who worked for the DNC, right, in, in Washington, D.C., and he's alleged to have been the leak, the dump of information to WikiLeaks that exposed Hillary Clinton's emails with John Podesta and Robbie Mook and, uh, you know, and all the, you know, and uh, Eric Braverman and all these conversations that were going on with Debbie Wasserman Schultz and, and uh, Donna Brazil and how they were how they were colluding with the with the DN they were colluding with the media and uh, the Pi Piper strategy to ra elevate Tom uh, Donald Trump and and slander and steal Bernie Sanders' money and his reputation and his people right? all that stuff was revealed in the in the in the leak in the dump right? of which Seth Rich arguably we don't know for sure but we think that he certainly did play a role in that and was it was was uh disappeared on the streets of, of dc now there's still no evidence of a murder there's no evidence that a murder occurred in that fashion there's no crime scene there's no autopsy there's no ballistics there's just a story about a kid who worked for the dnc and suddenly there was this other ancillary ancillary uh story about a kid getting shot in the street so so fear, the, that's really the, the theme of mob hits. Who has more bodies under the bodies in the body bag, Hillary Clinton or John Gotti? Well, it looks like Hillary Clinton, but, but the difference is that in, with, the, with the Italian mob, right, the gangsters, Gotti and those guys, they wore that sort of thing as a badge. They said, okay, yeah, fuck with us and we're going to fucking whack you, right? Whereas the Clintons do it covertly or through varying degrees of separation where they're not initially they're not there viewing the body as as with Gotti and ultimately Gotti rotted in prison you know for 10 years he died of throat cancer in Marion State Prison in I think Illinois or something right I think that's where it is in solitary confinement he he lived Gotti spent the last 10 years of his life in a in a cell in solitary confinement for the murders for the five murders i got i think i put their names down it's definitely he was convicted he was convicted on the murders of paul castellano thomas bellotti d bernadette darrow i don't know who that is liboro milato and louis de bono <laughs> all the vowels right so so he was ultimately convicted on these five murders plus racketeering and all, all the things extortion 
uh, you know, bribery, all the things that the Clintons, you know, do on a daily basis, right? What did in the Clinton Foundation, right? And and Hillary Clinton, in not not has not not only has she never served a day in in jail, but she lives a life of luxury beyond most 99% of ours, ours wildest dreams. She lives with millions and millions of dollars and 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 influence all over the world and and immunity from any sort of conviction or or trial or or or, or challenge of her criminality. Right? It's a, it's a heavy subject. I mean it's 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 fascinating when you think about it that we live in a time where where someone in, in politics is now the new mob. Right? The new mob is, is, is operated. The people that used to go after the mob are now the mob. Like they've eliminated their competition. And now they are the mob. Right? Where they kill people and disappear people. Is that is it, is it theory? You have to be living in a bubble to think that all of these 57 or 80 you know, uh, situations where someone gets close to Hillary Clinton are suddenly um, are just coincidence. I, I just, just, I fundamentally disagree. Yeah. With Gotti, at least we, we, we saw the body. They and, and ultimately they had there, there were witnesses because there was political will to prosecute. Right? That's the difference. The only difference is that there's a political will to prosecute when there was separation of powers where. Where judicial and 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 legislative and executive branches had separations of power under a constitution, back in the 80s, we don't have that anymore because judicial and legislative and executive branch are all mushed into one, and money moves sideways from the judges to the to the congressmen to to the to the executive branch and the FBI and the CIA guys, and and all this money just flows back and forth, up and down, back and forth, up and down. And it it, um, it it distorts the reality of uh, of of this sort of thing, this sort of uh, you know organized crime. So I hope that was helpful. My name is Marcus Conti, reporting from his mother's basement, Brooklyn, New York, fucking New York. Peace.